What's up? This is Devin with the Cage Rage Podcast. If you have not liked the CRP yet on Facebook and YouTube, please go and do so. Hit the like button, hit the share button if you find the information in this video of value. And today I'm here to talk to you about UFC 241. Everything you need to know about UFC 241 this Saturday in Anaheim, California, live exclusively on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. And the main event of the evening is going to be a much-anticipated heavyweight title rematch between current champion Daniel D.C. Cormier taking on the former UFC heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic. And what more can really be said about Daniel Cormier? He's been such an amazing ambassador for the UFC. He's got his new show Detail on ESPN+. Plus. He's been a great commentator, a great representative in media for the sport of mixed martial art and for the company of the ultimate fighting championship. And not only that, this man is literally one of the absolute greatest pound pound for pound fighters we've ever seen. His, his resume is, is second to very little. He, this is a man who is a former Olympic wrestler. He is a former strike force heavyweight champion. He is a two division champion in the UFC. He was also a simultaneous UFC light heavyweight champion and a sim- at the same time as he was the UFC heavyweight champion. He beat the best of the best at light heavyweight other than one man. He beat Alexander Gustafson, Rumble Johnson twice. He's undefeated at heavyweight. And as he's the champion at light heavyweight, he moves up in weight class to take on Stipe Miocic, who had more title defenses in the UFC than any other heavyweight before him, and knocks him out in the first round to become a two-division champion and cement his legacy as one of the best that's ever walked into a cage. And he is going now for the second time against a man who was actually favored to beat him going into the first, first fight. Stipe Miocic... Three title defenses does not sound like a lot until you put things into context. The heavyweight division, with all of its flaws, definitely been the weakest division in the UFC for several years now. But, and there's been a lot of recycled fights of the same old fighters and old contenders fighting each other all the time. We don't really find that with Stipe Miocic. We find somebody who is unique to this generation. And he proved it. He turned out to be the best heavyweight that we had seen from this generation. This man comes in, he knock, he beats Mark Hunt. He knocks out an old, uh, Andre Arlovsky. He goes in, gets his title fight with Fabricio Verdum, knocks him out in the first round, knocks Alistair Overeem out in the first round in his first title defense, knocks Junior Dos Santos out in the first round of his second title defense. And then he gets put in with the scariest man we've ever seen in a cage, Francis Ngannou. And he is being overlooked in the lead-up to this fight. All the focus is on this new knockout machine, this scariest man alive, Francis Ngannou. He's going to be the new face of the heavyweight division. And Stipe goes in there and wins five rounds to nothing and exposes the hype train that was Francis and that he still had a whole lot of work to do to his overall MMA game. We'll move on from there. Stipe gets matched up with the light heavyweight champion, notable name, Daniel Cormier. And going into that fight, he was the favorite to win and was fighting well, able to neutralize some of the wrestling and um, was getting some shots off. It, was, it seemed to be a very competitive first round. Takes a finger to the eye. And then not long after that, gets caught in the clinch with a nice break off the clinch right hand from Daniel Cormier flattens him, lights go out, loses his belt, belt shifts to D.C. Then he goes and holds out, takes a big risk of his career, refusing to fight anybody but the rematch with Cormier. There was talk of a Brock Lesnar fight with D.C., which would have just been a big money grab for the UFC, D.C., and Brock Lesnar. Completely unwarranted of a fight for a guy who has not won a fight inside the octagon legitimately without the use of steroids since 2011 and it, you know, dating back to pre Usada days, uh, that whole line about without steroids was probably misplaced. But D- Stipe Miocic is a guy who the UFC never got behind for whatever reason. This was a blue collar Midwestern 
boy who is a volunteer firefighter as he's a UFC heavyweight champion. He's a very exciting fighter, a finisher, and they never got behind him. And they never really put all their chips into the basket with him. This fight this weekend is very interesting. And as I mentioned earlier, the three title defenses things with Stipe, that doesn't sound impressive until you consider nobody before him was able to defend the heavyweight title more than twice. Not Randy Couture, not Tim Sylvia, not Cain Velasquez, not Junior Santos, nobody. Two title defenses was the limit. In comes Stipe, he gets three title defenses. So he has the record for most heavyweight title defenses in UFC history. And, you know, then DC comes in and beats him. So Stipe has a great resume, and so does DC, who's, as I mentioned earlier, undefeated at heavyweight. And the one big flaw on his knock on his record of being potentially the greatest we've ever seen when, it, when you count impact on the sport, representative outside of the, uh, uh, outside of the sport, um, outside of the cage, and you uh, consider his accomplishments inside the cage. DC is right there if it were not for one name, John Jones, which a lot of people think a third and final match between those two could be on the horizon should DC get through Stipe in this fight. I don't think it's just a said and done case for DC, though. Stipe is a great fighter, so this is going to be exciting. In the co-main event is has been dubbed the people's main event of the evening between Nate Diaz taking on Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis coming in, number seven, ranked in the welterweight division. And on that note, when we start talking about this fight, that's the first thing to look at, welterweight. These guys are fighting this fight at 170 pounds. Nate Diaz and Anthony Pettis have historically had their career, the vast bulk of their career, down at 155 pounds. Anthony Pettis was a former WEC and UFC champion at that weight class. And, you know, when you, we look at Diaz, 19 and 11 overall, 14 and 9 in the UFC, but that doesn't really tell the story. This is a man who won the Ultimate Fighter 5 when he was coming into the UFC back in June of 2007. He's got wins over guys like Donald Cerrone and obviously his big win over Conor McGregor and Michael Johnson and others. And he's been a consistent fan favorite for many years, but really his stock took off with the Conor McGregor fight. And he, and he also had a lot of publicity due to the, to the very pop big popularity of his older brother, Nick Diaz. And, you know, since the McGregor fights, which made him a millionaire, made him a huge household name in the sport, he has been inactive for the past three years, really holding out for, I believe, a favorable matchup that would make him money and picking the right moment to come back. I still think a third McGregor fight is on the horizon if he can get through this match. When we look at Pettis, as I mentioned, former WEC and UFC lightweight champion, he's famous for the famous Showtime kick back in the WEC days where he kicked off the cage and dropped Benson Henderson and ended up winning a decision in that fight to win the WEC title. And he was also the first MMA fighter to ever hit the cover of the Wheaties box back, I believe, in around 2010 times. This is a man who in the UFC has fought in three divisions now. He's fought down at 145, he fought at 55 where he was a champion, and he just had his debut at welterweight in his last fight, pulling off a surprising win over Steven Wonderboy Thompson, knocking him out in the second round, putting him at number seven ranked in this division. This is a guy who's had a lot of ups and downs in his career, and many people are speculating that maybe this move to welterweight will do him really good. And with a big win here over Nate Diaz, I think it sets him up with potential lucrative fights going forward. And in fact, from his own word on Harry Olawani's show, he was offered a fight with Conor McGregor back in the day. Um, not long ago, earlier this year, actually. And uh, that those negotiations fell through. He ends up with Nate Diaz. But the fact that they're even talking about him as a potential um, option for these type of big names is really good for Anthony Pettis and where he's at in his career. Moving on in this car, we got another very pivotal fight. This one in the middleweight division between former title challenger Yoel Romero taking on Paulo Costa. Romero coming in number two in the division, 13 and three overall, 10 and two in the UFC. He's lost two bouts currently on the books to the current champion at this division, Robert Whitaker. Scary physique, notable wins over. Luke Rockhold, Jacare Souza, Chris Weidman, Derek Brunson, Leona Machida. And he's taking on, if there's anybody in the sport right now that matches the physique 
uh, the the scary style, the scary physique that does Yoel Romero. It's this new 28 year old kid, Paulo Costa, who is 12 and 0, undefeated, 4 and 0 in the UFC. All of his fights, all 12 of them, and all four, obviously all four of them in the UFC, he's finished them all within two rounds. And this man looks like an action figure the same way Yoel Romero does. He fights with a supreme intensity. And this is going, I think that this is going to be the counter attack of Romero taking on the, the forward aggression of Paulo Costa. Both are powerhouses, both are just frightening people. And both are incredibly confident athletes. This is bound to be fireworks. And it's a big opportunity for Paulo Costa. As we mentioned, as I mentioned, Romero has lost two fights to current champion Robert Whitaker. A lot of people believe he, myself included, believe he won that second fight with Rob Whitaker, but he didn't make weight. If he makes weight, that's the first question we look at this fight. Do the, either one of these guys miss weight? Romero's had some struggle making it to 185. But regardless, here he is. He's definitely the next in line for the winner of Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya later this year for the middleweight title, should he win this. And I would actually argue that Paulo Costa, with a win over somebody as good and big and big of a name as Yoel Romero, I believe he becomes the number one contender in this division if he wins. And I, um, I, I think I look at this right now as the logical sequence at middleweight should be like a little four man tournament right now between. Yoel Romero and Paulo Costa fighting for the next contendership with Adesanya and Whitaker fighting in October in the massive fight that's going to be in Australia later this year at UFC 243, I believe. But moving on from here, there's another big middleweight bout that's of significance in this division. We got number eight ranked middleweight right now, Derek Brunson, taking on number 10 ranked middleweight, Ian Heinish. Brunson, 35 years old, 19 and 7 overall, 10 and 5 in the UFC. But when we look at those five losses, for Derek Brunson in his career right now in the UFC, you can you you get this this that you know yeah he's got five losses but they were against supreme talent. We've got Yoel Romero, Rob Whitaker, Israel Adesanya, Jacare Souza, and a very 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 controversial decision loss to Anderson Silva that a lot of people think should have went to Derek Brunson. So he's obviously fought very good competition. When we look at Ian Hines, 31 years old, coming off the Contender Series, he's ranked number 10, 13 and one in MMA, two and zero in the UFC off of the Contender Series, and he gets his ranking with a big decision win just a few months ago over ranked contender Antonio Carlos Jr. And that gets him ranked. Now he's getting another big push to get in a fight with Derek Brunson, which would, if with with a win here, will move him even further up the these middleweight rankings. And this is such a great division right now. And I think this is going to be an interesting fight. And then going further on down the card, there's a big prelim fight that's very significant for its division right now. And that's the number three ranked bantamweight. Rafael Asuncao taking on Corey Sanhagen. And when we look at this Bantamweight division right now, man, ever since the, when the TJ Dillashaw fallout happened, there was this vacuum left in this division. And we had uh, no champion. Marais and Cejudo get set up for the title fight. Cejudo's won. We already know that. But after that, we, we still have Marlon Marais in the picture. Aljamain Sterling, Pedro Munoz, former champions like De- Dominic Cruz and Cody Garbrandt. We got these new contenders like Petter Jan and, and Corey Sanhagen and still got veterans like Rafael Sunsau. And now we just heard last week that Frankie, the answer, Edgar, is finally moving down into this division. And Uriah Faber just came out of retirement. So this is a very hot division right now in the UFC. And with Rafael Sunsau right now, you got a 37-year-old veteran, 27-6 and six overall, 13-3 and three UFC record, a much very underrated UFC career. And he's got notable wins over people like Marlon Rice and TJ Dillashaw and Aljamain Sterling and Rob Font. So he's got the experiment experience factor here. But when we look at Corey Sanhagen, we're looking at somebody that's just supremely talented. He's ranked number nine right now, 27 years old, 11 and one overall, and he's four and zero in the UFC. And he just got his big push in the rankings by getting a big win over John Lineker. And he's very crafty. He reminds me a lot of Dominic Cruz, only maybe with a little bit more power. So. Um, Stay tuned for watch it for that fight because the winner of that fight, I believe, is in the top five of this division right now moving forward and is definitely somebody that could be knocking on the door of a potential title fight moving forward. And then to finish this up, there's three young contenders that I definitely want to highlight. First, there's two that sound very similar. They're both 26-year-olds, 
and they both are 2-0 and in the UFC, and they're both coming off the contender series with those two wins. And that's Sodik Youssef, who's fighting on the main card against Gabriel Benetez, ben- uh, 9-1, and 2-0 in the UFC since coming off the Dana White contender series. He's 26 years old. And the other one is Devontae Davis, who's 2-0 and in the UFC since coming off the contender series, 26 years old also. And he's fighting comma worthy on the UFC um, 241 prelims cards. And then last but not least, the CRP prospect of the week pick for this week at UFC 241 will be Manny, the Bermuda Triangle Bermudez, who's also fighting on this weekend's prelim event. And this is a 25-year-old kid, 14-0, undefeated, 3-0 in the UFC. All of them have been fantastic submissions. This is a very talented bantamweight kid with a lot of potential. So keep your eye on Manny, the Bermuda Triangle Bermudez. And with that, I'll recap it real quick. But this is everything you need to know about the UFC 241 card this weekend, live on ESPN Plus pay per view. The prelims will be on ESPN Network. You got a big heavyweight title bout between Daniel Cormier and Stipe. It's a rematch between the winningest heavyweight champion in history and Steve Miocic versus the double champ, the great ambassador, the former Olympian, the former strike force champion, Daniel Cormier in the co-main event. You got the, really the people's main event, the, the, the hyped fight that everybody's excited for the fun fight between popular star, Nate Diaz and former UFC and WEC lightweight champion, Wheaties box, showtime kick, wonder boy, knockout, Anthony showtime Pettis. That is bound to be fireworks. And then in the, Third big fight of the night. You got an anatomy chart of a fight here between Yoel, the soldier of God, Romero taking on Paulo Costa. Both these guys are action figures. They're, they, they, their, their styles clash with each other. You got a counter attack guy who's powerful and explodes on you and is a fantastic wrestler. And then you got Paulo Costa, this new upstart young kid who's coming up, who is finishing everybody he fights undefeated is motivated and he's going to come forward trying to to beat the guy that nobody in this division wants to fight. And then you have another big bantamweight bout between Derek Brunson and Ian Heinish. Both these guys are ranked in the top 10. Both of these guys are wanting to stay in that ranking and move forward in this division. And then you have a big bantamweight contender bout between old vet Rafael Asuncao, who's got a stellar UFC record and fought all the notable names against a no young upstart, Corey Sanhagen. And then three new young contenders with Sodic Youssef and Devontae Davis, both coming off the Dana White contender series, undefeated so far in their UFC tenure. And then you got the CRP, prospect of the week pick, Manny, the Bermuda Triangle, Bermudez. 3-0 and inside the UFC, six submission game. He is the CRP guy to watch this weekend for prospects. And this has been everything you need to know about UFC 241. Stay tuned to the CRP for further updates.